Hello everybody and welcome back to the Jake's RC Stuff channel and today we're building a new plane but it isn't new to the channel this is actually going to be the second Micro Sky Hunter that I have built this is the Yushin one um, bought from Banggood it's been sat on the shelf for quite a while I actually bought it as a spec I enjoyed my first one so much and my first one was basically just a fly about at the speed of light it wasn't the fastest one ever in the world but you know fly around like an idiot uh, and just have fun with it and i had a lot of fun with it didn't last very long because i was having that much fun with it and it hit many objects um but it, it really was a lot of fun um and also it was the i know there was someone at uh our flying site who uh used to fly with um sort of saw it in the classic example of it's not the size of what you do with it um basically looked at it for oh, that looks a bit you know crap and cheap um and then when you saw me just hooning around having fun with it uh, i believe it was sort, sort of on his radar or something to buy, um, but uh, never got around to it. Um, but I'm getting around to building mine. Um, this is the EPO version. Um, there is also a Nano Sky Hunter, which is basically the same thing but with different stickers. I thought that was the EPP one, it isn't. Um, and then there's the Nano Sky Hunter um, from Ready Made RC, that's the black one, which is EPP. And would be more bouncy for um, flying into the ground at ridiculous miles an hour like I did with the first one. Um, but this is where you get in the box. You get a basic sort of blown out diagram of how it's built. You get stickers. You get two booms. A tail. Bits to finish the tail. Two wings. A wing tube. Canopy. Um, and of course the fuselage. Now in the fuselage as well. Which I don't think I got on the first one. It was actually a cross bracket and four screws for screwing the bracket to the wood um that's quite nice because i suppose a lot of people get mini quad motors for these and mini quad motors don't come with back plates but at the same time they didn't put the screws in to screw the back plate to the motor but never mind um so what am i using this one for so this one isn't going to be for screaming around i will build one for screaming around again because it was a lot of fun but this is actually going to be a long range as much as long range as i can get out of this sort of proper FPV one. So we have our Zero HD Copilot. I've only got, I ordered two of these and I saw them first come out and you could finally get hold of them because it took a while to get hold of them. And I also got one with my uh, 250 gram, whatever it would call, the Dart. Dart, yes, Dart 250G, which I haven't flown yet, but it's all ready to go. Um, so what am I going to, so I'm going to put that in it, of course. Uh, and then for the camera, I haven't actually bought it yet. I need to buy it now and um, get it on its way from Banggood. It's just a matching camera for this. See what that's like. Um, again, I haven't tested the one that came with the 250G. And if it's not good enough, then I can always upgrade it to a different, either all-in-one camera, which is what that is, or a separate camera and video transmitter. But just for now, for packaging reasons, um, I'm just going to try and go for the other one. Um, we've also got... Oh, the wire lead came with it as well. Um... For servos, I've never used these servos before. They are the PTK, well, that's not their actual name, it's from A2 Pro 7350 MGD Digital Metal Geared Servos. Um, the one that had the other one were actually the spare parts if you've got the plug and play version of the Sky Hunter. They were all right, um, but they did break if they got knocked, which I'll explain one of the modifications they're going to do to this. Um, I did buy some Tower Pro ones, and they were crap. It's like if you, if you, when you were tightening them up, you would strip them, even if they weren't powered up to the battery or anything like that. They would just strip. They, they were crap. But luckily, I only got like six of them, and they're just going to sit in a drawer and rot away. Uh, but I've got these to try. Um, they're not cheap. That's not even what it is. They're not cheap. Um, they do weigh more than five grams. I think they're like six and a half grams because they're metal geared. But basically, I just wanted the the size. They're not quite a nine gram. Otherwise, I'll just stick MG90 Pros in this. Um, we need three. One for each arrow and one for the elevator. There is no rudders on it. For speed controller, I'm probably going to stick this in. One of the old 30 plus 30 amps. Has a... Oh, it's only a 2 amp back. Hmm. That changes my mind slightly. If this was just a three servos and a receiver plane... I'd probably go with this. I think this is what the original one might have had. Yeah, I don't know. It's just on the channel. You can look it up. Um, but what I'm probably going to do instead then is have to find a Beck for it. Uh, it needs to be about a 3M speed controller. 
And as I say, if it was three servers and the receiver, two amps is probably enough, but it's also running a flight controller and the camera off of it as well. Um, and if it's going to be possibly at higher milliwattage to get distance, then that might be a minor inconvenience. Um, but yeah, so um, we might have to rethink the speed controller. Basically, a 30 amp speed controller, ideally with a back built in. I do have. I think I put it away. Unfortunately, I put it away. Um, but I did have the speed controllers I bought for the Concorde that I decided not to use. They're a bit bigger and bulkier, but they are certainly less footprint than a separate back and speed controller. If it was, was a larger long range plane, I would use two separate ones anyway, because A, I have the space, and B, uh, for redundancy, uh, but for this, it's not going super far away, I don't think. Um, and um, yeah, because of space constraints, I don't have the room for it. So, as a receiver, I'm probably going to use this R9 Slim. I do also have, in case you're really, really struggling for space, the R9 Mini. Um, yeah, uh, the only other thing that's slightly interesting about this, which is going to be one of the two modifications we need to do, is the battery. So these are, of course, the 3000 4S batteries that I made up. There is a video of me making, this is my first one, I'm making the second one on the channel. So there's plenty of room to slide this battery forward and back. It's a 3000. The other one I used to fly was a 4S 1400 multi-star pack. It was about 40 or 60C. Um... This is only 10C, but it's a 3000, and it can burst up to 50. So, you see the motor's only going to do 25 amps. Um, it's fine. The things that aren't here, so of course there's a camera, and I'm also missing my T-motor that's going to go on the back. It's a MN2206 2000 KV, something like that. Um, I'll try and link it in the description if I remember. Um, that is on its way. I have actually ordered that. Um, so, yeah, main modifications that are going to be done to this, because I don't want it to look massively ridiculous. I need to modify the canopy, so the standard canopy as it sits now, as you can tell, won't fit. But my idea is if I can cut out most of this inner canopy and then glue this on top, it should be fine. Use your eyes. Yeah, so that is about fine. So if I just cut out more or less around this wood and then glue the two together, we should be fine in that respect. The other modification I'm going to be doing is actually to the tail. One of the problems I had on the original one of mine is that I stripped the servo. Um, now, it normally fits like this. And what happens when I replace the servo, when I dug it out, is I basically cut a hole all the way through. So it fit, fitted flush with the tail and carried on from there. Now, that's all right, um, and this little plastic thing to cover over it really didn't help with that. Um, so my idea was, is because the tailplane is symmetrical and this slot is, it doesn't have like a ridiculous angle of attack on it, was to just install it upside down, effectively, so the servo is on the top. Not uh, as a nice looking, but certainly a lot better than a massive hole in it, and a lot stronger, of course, because um, it did get a bit whappy after I'd done that. Um, the only problem is, of course, is the lead is meant to come out this way, uh, but it, it's obviously going to be on the wrong side. So, I have two options. Because there is actually holes in the other one, so I could route the cable. But there's two problems with that. If I cut this, or, or, or get the catch out the end, and pull it through, and then I can't get it back in this, and I can't get it back in this, then we kind of knack and I end up with an ugly wire sort of tie wrapped down the boom if now the this wire isn't like normal servo wire if i compare it to normal servo wire like what i have on this receiver you can really tell the difference so what i would probably do if i had that more of this cable or if it is the standard cable is try and do the other side if it works then i can take the other side out but because i can't do that i don't want to risk knackering it up to be fair as i say i have got another one of these on the shelf so i could just probably go and borrow another boom for now and then the one that's going to be smashed to pieces immediately, can have the wiring down the tail boom. Um, but what I'm going to do instead, one of the first things we're going to do is basically cut the slot down here and push the hole through to 
connect that. The wire, the reason why this servo is out of the bag is because I wanted to make sure the wire was long enough and it's actually massively too long. So um, that's good news for this way. It's even shorter this direction, which means we have to tie up, let's get a tie wrap it around here. So there could be a tie wrap on it, but hopefully it looks a bit better than it, the cable going down the boom. Uh, but yes, so I'm going to cut that slot and get the slot sorted um, and then we'll move on with the rest of the build. But because since this has already been 10 minutes, I'll probably do this as like the unboxing, although it wasn't really in the box because I've done that already. Um, but the sort of overview of the project and the uh, next video will actually be the first episode on the build. So thank you for watching. Like if you liked it, subscribe for more stuff. And um, I will try and get links to everything in the description relatively quickly there might be a couple of episodes in before it gets added uh depending on how uh far back i am with editing stuff um but yes we'll get this cut and glued and i will see you in the next one